Welcome everybody to Understanding and Using Ratios 1, Getting Started. This resource is designed to support tutors who are just beginning to teach ratios and gives instruction on what you might do in your very first session. Now this resource assumes that learners have had very little experience with ratios in the past. And so there are four steps that we're going to work through. First one is getting to know what your learners already know about ratios. Number two, demonstrating relevance, that is linking ratios to authentic tasks. Number three, discussing and clarifying what the ratio notation actually represents. And number four, starting out right. And that's about avoiding some of the pitfalls that might occur in your teaching. Step number one is finding out what learners already know. And this can be done by placing learners into groups or asking them to arrange themselves in groups and then asking them two questions. What are ratios and where do you find them? And you just allow learners to discuss that for several minutes and then get them to feed back to the front of the class and share ideas. From experience, learners have had limited understandings of ratios and often you get answers like cooking, gear ratios with cars, but often learners are not too sure where they're found or how they work. Now after learners have had an opportunity to discuss with each other what they think ratios are and where they think ratios are found, the idea is then to link ratios to relevant tasks. And for example, the petrol to oil mix is a common one in the agricultural field, and you might ask learners if they've ever had to do this or if they know how it might be done. You might also talk about mixes for fertilizers, sprays, drenches, and so on. And you might even talk about gear ratios and how they work. But the main point of step number two is that you demonstrate to learners how they're going to be using ratios in their workplace and what they're going to be able to do at the end of these sessions. Step three, moving into understanding the notation. And the notation is simply what you can see on the screen there. One to two, two to three, and three to seven. And this is the place where learners often get confused. But it's good to remind learners that ratios are quantities of equal parts. The unit of measure is always the same. The ratio notation one to two means one to two. Now this might seem like common sense to you, but often learners lack this fundamental understanding of what the ratio notation means, and getting off on the wrong foot can damage learners' confidence and leave them confused as we go forward. You know, and just to demonstrate this one more time, a ratio of one to two means one to two, but the units of measure are the same. They are the same parts, one part to two parts. And it doesn't matter how many there are, so long as the ratio stays the same. Now why it's important to cover those fundamental facts is because whenever we see ratios in the real world, often they don't use the same unit of measure. And this can be very confusing for learners. And here is an example. Here we have the instructions for drench. And if I just highlight the main point, to suspend, mix one part of lime flour with four parts of water. And keep in mind that water is measured in liters or milliliters, and the lime flour is mixed in grams. And this is where potential confusion can occur for the learner. Now here's another example of some instructions. And just to point out that it says, mix five grams of zeal per liter of water. And again, you can see that we have two different units of measure when it's written in the instructions. Again, stem injection, poplars, willows, privets, and pines. Mix 20 grams of zeal per liter of water. So we've got things measured in grams, and we've also got things measured in liters. And again, this is where the potential confusion will occur for learners. And that's what we want to make sure we clear up and clarify as we move forward. As we move forward through this series, we're going to explain exactly what we mean by this and clarify it for you. 100 milliliters per one liter of water is a fairly common ratio that you see uh, in a whole lot of mixtures. 100 milliliters per one liter of water should not be shown initially like this because the units of measure are different. There we have one whole liter and there we have 100 mil. And so we have mixed units of measure. One is in liters and one is in milliliters. So it looks to the learner like it's 100 to one. And we know it's not 100 to one. 100 milliliters per one liter of water would be better presented as equal parts. That is one of these to 10 of these. So the learners can see that it's equal parts 
it's the same unit of measure and for every one of these we have 10 of these before we move to the liter. Now attention to these more subtle issues can ensure at the end of your sessions that the majority of learners have a good understanding of how ratios work rather than having learners who are still slightly unsure about the nature of ratios. Just to re-articulate, getting started with ratios, this is something you might do in your very first session. Number one, find out what the learners already know and cultivate a discussion around that. Number two, demonstrate relevance to the learners. Link ratios to real tasks. Number three, discuss and clarify what the ratio notation actually represents. And number four, making sure you start out right and avoid falling into some of those pitfalls. We hope this was helpful. Thank you.